Uh, hi guys, Mike Hayden here and I'm here with Jeff Lawton. Uh, six or seven years ago I came up here to Zaytuna Farm and did a permaculture design course. Uh, before that I was doing a few different things and playing with a caravan and motorhome solar. And um, one thing that really stuck out for me after doing the course, it was Jeff talked about going back home and taking that leap of faith and really going into a permaculture type business. So yeah, after spending 14 days here with the guys and I went back and did that and um, you know it was all Jeff's fault that I went back and took that leap of faith and started a new direction in life. So Jeff, how long have you lived off grid for? It's been 20 years since I've lived on the grid. So it's uh, quite a while. So Jeff, what are some of the things you've learned in the 20 years of being off grid? I think the fact the sun only shines in the middle of the day, like there's no, there's no charge at night. So there's this kind of, there's this solar alignment that you get to realize that that, that sun up there is the major power station. And you, you think about what you do during the day and you think about what you do at night. I think that's a, a big thing. And then over, over the 20 years, there's been more and more lithium batteries arrive with my students with laptops and, 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 and phones and, and they're continuously expecting that to be available to charge. And, and, and people generally don't realize that you've got to think about daylight and nighttime and, and, and when really the, the free energy arrives. Um, I, th I think that's a big thing. And the other, the other thing is you get to realize which appliances you take for granted are on all the time, like refrigerators and freezers. And, and there isn't a lot else that you really need. Um, so um, that, that's the one thing that, you know, what's on all the time is very relevant that that's efficient. And the other thing is you can have something that comes up with a big hit of electricity like a coffee machine, <laughs> <laughs> which I've got, but it's only on quick, right? So you can get away with that, but you've still got to think about it when you do it. Um, so that's that. That's it. And, and and tied into that is, of course, what kind of day is it? Like how much sun is there? Is it partial cloud, full cloud? You know, it makes a difference. So it should make a difference. It makes us pay attention. We should be paying attention to the world. So what's some of the worst experiences you've had living off grid in the 20 years? Oh, it, it's really because we have an institute and we have students coming without experience of living on the grid, having to explain to people these things that, you know, we don't use the large washing machine outside of nine o'clock to three o'clock. Um, and, um, and, and now we transfer a lot of information because we do a lot of films, having to keep long term downloads running, you know, um, and, and realizing we just have to know what's available, you know, how much storage is there. So um, what's the failure of some of the poorer battery systems, I suppose, is a big one. Um, and it's been great getting onto really solid battery systems that are large enough to give us the storage we need. Um, and we are totally standalone. But otherwise, not not much. Once you once you tune into it and you get it, it's not difficult. Uh, but we we live we live a permaculture life, so we are in touch with the reality around us. We, you know what we do is, you know, we're, we're responsible for supplying as much of our, our needs as possible. So we kind of tune into it. But I think that's a great lesson for everybody. We we should all be tuned into the responsibility of how much energy we we require, and. Um, so I think it's it's a very valuable thing for people to live this way anyway. Yeah. It comes to the, the whole knowledge is power, um, but only knowledge is power only if it's implemented. So the education process, if implemented, can really make a difference. Yeah, you get the information, but if you don't act on it, it doesn't make any difference. You, yep. You're still you're still part of the problem. Yeah. Uh, but when you realise what part of your life may have been the problem, you can change. And, and so well, at least you, you've got a chance now to actually be part of the solution. Yeah. So if you were, for someone designing an off-grid house in the bush, what sort of tips would you give them about designing a system? Ah. <laughs> I would say design a system that suits your average lifestyle, like what you, what you normally use, and be prepared to supply the surplus 
only occasionally. So if you're going to have a big party, right, well, run a generator or, or have a grid switch if you, if you are connected. But if you're not connected, I, I think it's easier to actually then say, well, I'll, I'll use a generator only when I have to, right, because it's not a lot of extra. Um, you know, you might have a workshop and, and now and again, you know, you, you might want to use an angle grinder and weld and use these big power tools. Uh, but un unless you're doing that all the time, you don't need a system that, that, that has that potential all the time. So, you know, why not, why not then use a backup? Because most of the time we find that, you know, just work out what it is you need to use all the time. That's absolutely essential to your lifetime lifestyle. And, and, and those other occasions where you need a lot of power, use something else. Use a, back, use a generator or, or, or connect to the grid just at that time on a switch. So, so what about someone that was living in, you know, you know, I took my house off grid in the middle of Sydney and my biggest problem is I didn't have enough roof space. So someone, you know, that lives in suburbia that wants to take their house off grid, what tips would you give them and recommend them? Right. Well, if, if you haven't got enough roof space and you haven't got enough panels... Um, you having a larger battery bank could you could give you storage on after the good days, but it's not necessary. It's going to run down if you have a lot of bad cloudy days. That's that's the thing. Um, but then it's change your lifestyle a bit. Change your appliances definitely. Have a good look at your appliances, um, and 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 check out where else you can save energy. You know, is is it you know, if if you just want to be part of more part of the solution. You know, growing your own food is going to save you a lot of energy, of course. Uh, catching your own water and reducing your transport costs. Generally look at that in the big picture. Um, and, um, you know, with the grid switch, there are, there are ways that you can look at when you're off peak and, and you've got less energy costs when the grid's on. Um, think about when you switch the grid on. Um, and have that option to switch on and off. Um, other and, and, and also look at all the energy demands of your house. Have you got a house that's really well insulated? You know, that, that can you reduce its need to heat itself and cool itself? You know, insulation will do that. Um, can, you, can you be more passive solar? Do you need to switch the lights on or, 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 or can you have more natural sunlight? Think about all those things that reduce your energy cost. It can, it can, a lot of it can just come down to design. Can you, can you retrofit your house to, to have less energy demand? Yep. Yeah, d definitely that um, design. You know, if you had someone get the build from scratch is one of the best things you can do and best investments to do when you're taking a house off grid. But when someone's in suburbia, that retrofit sometimes be really challenging of what you're limited to, uh, especially in small spaces. So, um. What's three tips, three things, number, three priorities to look at, you know, when going off grid? What would your, your three best tips to be to someone? First, I think you really got to look at the energy you, do, you, you, you require. Go through everything that you use. Look at your bill. See how many kilowatts you use. Work out what you can reduce. I, I, you know, like check your appliances. Are they efficient? And, and then just check. Do you really need to use them? Because, you know, you can really reduce the system that you require. Right? So you can get an efficient system by adjusting your life, you know, habits. And then make sure that you can set a system up so it gets really good sun. Because you see a lot of systems set up on the wrong side of the house. Right? Why have you put panels on the wrong side? I mean, and... You've got to get over the, 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 the idea that, oh, it doesn't make the house look good because it doesn't fit in with the architecture. I mean, that's, uh, to me, that's crazy. I mean, it's almost like being dishonest to yourself. If the panels have to stand up on a rack to get good angles for, to get the maximum su sunlight, you, you should be proud of that statement. So make sure that you can, you can get enough panels because you've got to capture that sunlight. And then a battery bank that stands alone, even if you've got a grid switch and you can switch the grid on and off to charge or use extra energy because you've got a special demand, make sure that you've got a battery bank that's big enough to get you through the night time. Don't, don't stress it. Get a good storage system. So you're capturing the energy. Make sure you've got enough storage to get you through the night or 
look at your climate and make sure you know how many cloudy days you're likely to have. What are your sunlight hours over the year? You've, you've, got to, <laughs> you've got to be interested in your local meteorology. Now, we've got the internet today, so you can look all this up. How many cloud days are there? How many sun days are there? That just makes basic mathematics, and it's quite simple. And then, so you've got your system now. Right? So you and and you you can look at the efficiency of your house. I might be giving you more than three tips here, but like <laughs> you know the insulation of the house, the draft in this house, the passive solar aspect of the house. So that's all set up. Right? Is my house right? Is my habits right? Are my appliances right? I've got enough panels. I've got enough storage. And and then think about what you use and when you use it. Just your daily habits. When you can do washing at different times, you can do things at different times. Think about what you're using and when you're using it. That's all. That's all the rest of it. I mean, everything else is easy. The average nine-year-old gets it very, very, they, they, they understand it. The, 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 you know, the young digital experts of, of, of our era, they get it easily. So if you've got young kids in the house, get them to manage the solar for you. <laughs> they, they have no problems with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Jeff, for your advice and tips, and I hope it can help people out. It's Jeff Lawton. He's lived 20 years, and I know that's Jeff's what inspired me to get in and really push our solar business. Um, yeah, I saw a lot of the thing that gripes me with solar is um, solar panels that only last four or five years and end up in landfill. So I really want to, you know, make a difference and make sure that people were getting solar panels that were going to last for 25 years and pay back their embodied energy. And that was the important thing for me. And, you know, without coming on that PDC up here with you, Jeff, you know, I don't think I would have taken that leap of faith and got into a permaculture-based business. So thank you. Pleasure.